Hello! This video will be a quick overview of the revised vector shape tools uh, being released in MACE 2019-R1. Vector shapes are quite useful in your mission scenarios to define things such as airspace boundaries, uh, no fire areas or other fire support coordination measures, uh, roads, corridors, etc. To access the shape tools in MACE, you'll go to the mission controls ribbon on the toolbar and you'll find a shape tools grouping with the shape tools icon. Clicking on the Shape Tools icon will pull up a radial menu. When creating your vector shapes, you'll primarily use the tools in the Draw subgroup. And you'll see inside that Draw subgroup a number of different types of shapes that can be created, each having uh, its own particular workflow. And we'll go over that here in a moment. The Edit subgroup has a number of utilities to modify pre-existing shapes, either shapes that you've built uh, with the draw tools or imported from a pre-existing uh, ESRI shape file. Uh, you can do things such as rotate them around their center point, scale them, move them, or edit the points inside of those shape files. The text subgroup is for importing shapes that are defined by well-known text, and we'll go over an example of that here in a moment. The combined tools take pre-existing shapes and join them into new shapes using uh, Boolean operations, and it does so in different ways. There can be unions or joins uh, of the two shapes, subtracting one shape from another, finding the intersection between two shapes, or the symmetric difference between two shapes. In addition, a number of pre-existing shape files can be merged into a single layer that can be then, then imported uh, into uh, your mission. This is quite useful for things like um, airspace boundaries where you may have a number of different uh, sub working areas inside a larger airspace. Uh, you can consolidate all those airspaces into one and import them into your mission. The export tools allow you to export shapes from the map uh, in different formats and currently supported are GML, well-known text, and KML for use inside of uh, Google Earth. So let's quickly draw a quick polygon to give you an idea of how to create shapes in Maze. To create a polygon, we go to the Draw subgroup, click on the outer ring, select Polygon. And we see a form pop up uh, that will summarize uh, our shape as we're building it. Our cursor is also changed, and as we click on the map, points will be dropped that define our polygon. You'll see those points are summarized in the points list in the draw polygon form. And those coordinates are in the coordinate format that are set up uh, in the uh, system settings for your MACE instance. Selecting a point in the points list, you can see that that corresponding point is highlighted on the polygon. And as we uh, scroll through those points, we can see that they're uh, each end turn highlighted on the map. Now we can edit those points. Let's say we want to move this point to another location, say here. If I were to right click on the map, I can copy location. The first right click will actually cancel out of dropping points. The second right click will pull up the context menu. I can edit this point and paste in a new location. And notice that it is in uh, a MGRS format. That's the default format for copying locations in. But it doesn't really matter in this point list. You can see that that point gets, uh, gets moved. Now, previously, prior to uh, MACE 2019 R1, if you wanted to adjust the appearance, you had to first create your polygon, uh, then go to the layer manager and uh, adjust its appearance from uh, the uh, properties of the shape uh, inside the layer manager. Now, uh, when you create a polygon, uh, you can adjust its appearance um, as you build it. It will default to a unfilled, so no color filled uh, polygon uh, with a one pixel solid uh, black uh, outline. But we could change that using the drop down here. And potentially, let's say we want to fill it, let's go with a, uh, an orange outline orange outline. We'll go two pixels on the outline. We'll 
leave it solid. We'll fill the polygon also with orange, but we'll drop the opacity down to something like that. We won't build our polygon yet. Clicking the draw will uh, actually draw the polygon, uh, but we'll give a quick overview of some of the other tools that are available. 3D properties, enabling 3D properties will allow you to define a bottom height and a top height for your uh, polygon. Uh, that can be useful uh, if you wanted to in turn use those properties uh, in um, a plugin uh, or, or to make decisions um, based on 3D properties uh, in your own coded logic in say a code script uh, or as mentioned a plugin. A tag is a user-defined tag uh, that you can enter in um, and it will appear uh, when you right-click on top of the polygon uh, in uh, Mace. So we'll just enter my polygon as our tag here. We'll go ahead and click draw. We'll get a save uh, and I just have a shapes folder set up on my desktop. I have some pre-built shapes in there that I'm going to use for this uh, example. And I'm just going to call this following my naming convention poly1. And there we have it. We have our outlined with opacity defined. When I right click on it, I get the shape tag of my polygon. Uh, I also have the option to re-tag it. I can say um, orange poly. And now when I right click, you can see that the shape tag has been changed. There are a number of uh, other options here, and we'll demonstrate these here in a moment. Uh, things you can do uh, with your shapes directly from the uh, context menu uh, in Maze. So that's the basics of building a shape uh, using the new shape tools in Maze. Now, oftentimes, uh, users will be working from something like, say, a uh, in-flight guide. Uh, and let's take a look at this uh, Lone Rock working area right here. We're going to try and replicate that area just from this uh, in-flight guide uh, uh, set of coordinates. Before I do that, I'm going to get rid of my polygon. I'm going to right click in the layer manager and remove that layer. Go back to mission controls, draw another polygon. Only this time, I'm going to actually import a text file where I've already taken that in-flight guide uh, and uh, copied those points out into a text file. That text file is on my desktop. I can open that text file, say import, and all of those points are populated in the point list. I can zoom in on that area and we can take a look at which point is which. If need be, we could edit the points as we did previously. Or we could add to the list by clicking this Select for Map and clicking Additional Points. And they would be added to the end of the polygon. The polygon would be expanded uh, as appropriate. Let's go ahead and draw this. We're just going to keep the default appearance. We're going to tag this as Lone Rock because that's what the working area is. We're going to say Draw. And we are going to uh, go back to uh, that shapes folder and we're going to call it Lone Rock. And there we have it. Right clicking on that shape, I have my Lone Rock working area. Let's go ahead and demonstrate how we could use that working area in a scenario. I'm going to drop an A10 into my mission. And I'm going to play. I'm going to delete all of his waypoints. And I'm going to right click on the uh, shape and tell him to proceed to that area. You'll see that a loiter circle is set up at the centroid of that shape. And my A10 is proceeding to that loiter area. I'm going to go ahead and hold him at a, another location. I'm going to control right click uh, up uh, to the north and allow him to fly up there. We may use him here in a moment. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of, uh, of that uh, polygon. A 
Okay, let's go back to our mission controls and we'll show how to draw a circle. We'll see a different form uh, for our user interface appear for actually drawing circles. Um, on the map, you'll see the same uh, draw cursor. The first click will define the center point of the circle. The second click will define the radius. And as we click, we'll see center points populated and radius is uh, populated. Uh, we can adjust those parameters, like say I only wanted an 8 nautical mile circle, I can adjust that uh, property and you'll see that the uh, corresponding depiction on the edit layer uh, on the map, the red circle, uh, was changed. Again, we can modify our properties if uh, need be, uh, but in this case we're going to keep the uh, default properties and we're going to go ahead and draw. In this case, I'm going to save over a previously defined circle shape, so this circle one. And you'll see when I do that, I'll get a prompt that asks that if I want to replace an already existing shape. In this case, I'll say yes, and my shape's drawn. Now, let's try and move this circle. Let's say we want to move it over the Carson sink. Uh, we'll use our uh, edit tools. We'll select the shape from the map and we can move it over. Uh, same goes for scaling the shape. We can select it and you'll see that it deforms as I, as I scale it. If you hold down the control key, however, you'll get a proportional scaling uh, for that shape. And we'll just accept that and my shape's modified. Okay, let's get rid of that circle shape and we'll draw a quick line. We're going to use this line as the basis of a corridor, and that corridor could be something like a minimal risk routing uh, for your aircraft. Uh, we'll go back to our mission controls and we're going to draw a line. Something like that. That'll work. We'll just keep all the defaults I'm going to save over a pre-existing line shape and replace it, and there's my line. Now from my shape tools, draw, I can define a corridor. You have to have a pre-existing line in order to define a corridor. The line defines the center uh, of the corridor. Uh, again, you'll see a different uh, user interface for working with corridors. Uh, your corridor width is going to be uh, the units of distance left and right of center line. So if I say two nautical miles here, then I'm actually going to have a four nautical mile wide, wide uh, corridor. In this case, I'm going to draw the center line uh, and I'll show you why here in a moment. Our boundary color will leave as red. We'll go two pixels on the draw size and we'll change the uh, boundary style or the stippling style on the boundary uh, to a dash dot style. I'm going to save over this pre-existing corridor shape that I have defined. I'll replace it and there's my corridor. Now you'll see I still have that black line, the original line. It appears in the, uh, in the layer manager. Uh, we can just turn off the appearance for that or we could uh, remove it. In this case we'll just turn off the appearance. Now in a manner similar to the Proceed 2 for our polygon shapes and our circle shapes, right clicking on a line, it doesn't have to be a corridor, any line, uh, we have uh, some shape specific properties that we can we can do with those shapes. Uh, in this case we're going to tag this shape as a minimum risk routing or MRR. I'll tag it. Now when we right click we can see that shape tag is uh, MRR. Uh, also I have a proceed via and a proceed via outbound. Now in the case of this A10 uh, I'm just going to tell him to proceed via. When I do that, it creates a route with waypoints at each of the nodes. And it uh, starts at the first point defined in the shape and builds out that route. Now, if I had additional waypoints, let's uh, add after, uh, oh, we'll cancel out of that. There we go. Or add after, there we go. If I add more waypoints, um, then when I right click on my proceed via, then it will 
uh, leverage all those uh, waypoints, the number of waypoints that are decided, defined for the platform. If you delete all and then proceed via, it will only use the number of waypoints necessary to get them from the beginning of the route to the end. Now, saying proceed via outbound does exactly the opposite. It starts at the last point in the defined shape and creates a route at each of the nodes for that shape or that line shape uh, to, um, to the first point. Uh, this is a very quick and easy way to uh, command your aircraft to do things like return along a minimum risk routing. Okay. In the layer manager, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of both of those line shapes. And now I'm going to uh, demonstrate uh, how to uh, use the WKT. So again, to access the WKT importer, we go to our shape tools, uh, text WKT, and uh, you'll see an import uh, WKT uh, form. Now I have a file, uh, it's just a text file with a WKT file extension on my desktop that has airspace already defined uh, for uh, the, uh, you're using WKT. So we'll open that sample up and you can see uh, how WKT is, is formatted. So in this case, it's a multi-curve uh, with a number of different points, essentially polyline points, and then a circular string defining an arc. Uh, so you can build fairly complex uh, shapes by defining them using WKT. In this case, I'm just going to say draw, and I'm going to call this uh, sample. Actually, we'll save it in that same location. Let's go uh, desktop shapes, WKT sample, save, and there it is. There's my shape. You can see those polyline points and then that circular arc that's defined uh, for that shape. Now, uh, you'll notice that I don't get the uh, context menu when I right click on the shape uh, for a WKT import. Uh, internally, it's represented slightly differently uh, than uh, polygons. Um, so that is a limitation when using uh, WKT to define uh, some of your airspaces, just uh, be aware of that limitation. All right, so let's go ahead and delete uh, that WKT sample. We'll remove that. We'll turn our layer manager off for now. Um, and let's do a quick overview of uh, some of the Boolean tubes uh, tools. And in this example, I'm going to create uh, airspace uh, that is defined by two circles, a larger circle and a smaller circle. So let's go ahead and draw those. So we'll say circle. We'll just draw one here. Uh, we'll do four nautical mile radius. That'll be fine. Uh, we'll use default appearance. So again, no fill, solid uh, one pixel black outline. And we're gonna call this circle one. We're just gonna save over that shape. And there it is. We'll draw a second circle. We'll do something like that. Uh, we'll make it uh, two and a half nautical mile radius. Uh, we're going to call this call this one circle two. Save that one. I'm going to use my edit tools and just bump out that uh, smaller circle just a bit so it's a little more apparent as to what we're doing. So we'll do something like that. And we're going to use these two as the basis of a new shape. We're going to use our combine tools, the join, to select our two shapes. You'll see it says polygon. Uh, internally, uh, circles are polygons uh, in, in Mace. And we're going to change the appearance of this one. We're going to go back to that orange two pixel solid outline, fill the polygon again with orange, and drop the opacity down just so it's apparent uh, when we draw it. And we're going to call this one join shape that'll be fine there we go and again in the layer manager we can see so view layer manager we can see the first circle shape the second circle shape circle one circle two and then the new shape that is defined by the join of those two 
So we'll remove those two and we'll zoom in here and take a look at what we have here. Now, because we're built from uh, two polygon shapes uh, internally, when we uh, uh, Mace understands that these this is just a new polygon, uh, I can use all of my context menu tools to uh, control uh, my aircraft. I can tag the shape. do all the things that I would with a normal polygon. Now I'd like to demonstrate the uh, some of the export uh, utility. And to do that, I'm going to build a KML file that we're then going to assign some 3D properties to uh, when we export. Uh, and we're gonna pull it into Google Earth for some 3D visualization. Uh, to do that, first let's draw our circle uh, we're going to use a circle as the basis of that shape, so I'm just going to draw a circle. Um, we're going to just keep the uh, default appearance, and we're not going to set any 3D properties in the shape itself. We're going to do that when we actually uh, do the export for the KML. So we're just going to draw that. We're going to call that uh, circle one again, replace that file, and there's our shape. To, to do the KML export, I go to the export portion. Uh, click on the uh, shape on uh, the map. You can see it's now populated in the edit layer. And under appearance, I'm going to give it a orange one pixel solid outline. We're gonna fill with uh, orange again, give it some opacity. Now we're gonna enable 3D properties. Uh, and if you're familiar with shapes inside of KML, uh, this will be familiar to you. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to clamp it to the ground. I'm going to make it relative to the ground. I'm going to put it at 3,000 meters, the top of the airspace at 3,000 meters uh, above the ground. 3,000 meters above the ground. And I'm going to extend the sides to the surface from the top of the shape. Click Export. I'm going to oversave this uh, pre existing KML that I have, and my shape is exported. Now I have Google Earth kind of in the right location uh, already. Uh, I To pull this in, we can uh, import, but we can also just drag and drop. So I'm going to take my circle shape, drop it into Google Earth, and there we have it. There's our exported KML shape imported into Google Earth with the 3D properties and the appearance properties uh, honored.